Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gary with the Get Some Podcast. And my guest this week is... <laughs> this motherfucking Gary. <laughs> everybody this is gary owen with the get some podcast uh we will start with my schedule i am in week two of my houston run uh last week was was amazing and then this week's gonna be even better tickets are on pace to sell even more than last week and we sold out all the shows and added one last week so houston improv uh friday and saturday's already sold out i think we're gonna add a third one saturday as we speak but you still can i think you can get tickets tonight there's not many left for thursday and Sunny's got a few. And then um, next weekend, I'm in Greenville, South Carolina at the Comedy Zone. That's going to be April 19th to the 21st. Uh, April 26th to the 28th. I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the Improv. May is going to May. May 3rd through the 5th. I'm in Colleen, Texas at the uh, Twice as Funny Comedy Lounge. May 10th through the 12th. I'm in Pleasanton, California at Tommy T's. And May 17th through the 19th, I'm in Jacksonville, Florida at the Comedy Zone. And then May 23rd through the 26th, I'm in Addison, Texas at the Improv over there in Addison. Yeah, so that's that, that's that's two months. That's, that's enough time. I don't need to get into June yet. Uh, Houston's just dope. So, oh, before I get started, I got my stitches out. As you can see, uh, it's so funny when you, when you clip up your podcast and then people don't watch the whole podcast and then they see a clip on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook and I'm like, dude, what happened to your eye? Nobody's going to comment on the eye? You're just not, you, you not going to address the eye? I go, I did. You have to watch the whole show to know about my eye. So <laughs> it's just funny to me. Are you just going to leave that alone like that? So anyways, here's just a dope city, man. And, and for those of you that don't know, yeah, I moved here, uh, a couple years ago, I moved here on the low. It became really official last year that I moved here. But, uh, man, it's like when you go through the divorce, you got to – you're kind of just like kind of a free agent. You don't know where you want to go. So what I, did, what I did know after my divorce, I wanted to be in a state with no state taxes. And I need to be in a city with a hub. So as much as I love Cincinnati – um, and Cincinnati cost of living isn't bad, but once Delta left Cincy, I couldn't get anywhere without a layover unless I was going to a, uh, place with a hub. So it was just like, man. So I was like, where can I go? And I had narrowed it down to Phoenix, Dallas, or Houston, three of my favorite cities. Phoenix doesn't really have a hub and it's a little far West to do most most of your gig, I don't know if you know this, but most stand up, eighty percent of your gigs are Texas East, uh, because once you get the West, the states are so freaking big. There's not as many big cities. So I was like, Phoenix kind of le left, and then it was down to Dallas and Houston, and I chose Houston. Uh, so they got United's hubs in Houston, Americans hubs in Dallas. So I was like, I can get anywhere. I can get pretty much anywhere within the United States within three and a half hours. And that's far. Most most flights are two. So Houston's just a dope city. The food's dope. The people's dope. They come out to see me. The They got everything here. I think Houston really took off as far as like a place to be. Because, you know, you got – everybody thinks guy when guys have a guy's weekend out or girls weekend out, uh, the, the, the go-to spots is usually a coast. Nashville seems to be a spot people go to. Miami's always good. Atlanta was a spot, especially for black people. Atlanta was the spot to have, like, you'd see a girls' weekend or a guys' weekend and stuff. Once COVID hit and Houston kind of stayed open, everybody realized how dope Houston was. And everybody already knew, but now they really knew. So then everybody started migrating to Houston for weekends to do stuff and to go out. And Houston has definitely accommodated because, man. This is just a great city. I love it here. So, it's, and it's nice to be able to go on stage and then go home afterwards. So, last week though, I I had my camera guy in town uh, from Cincinnati, and he's 23 years old, 
and he had never been to a strip club. So we took him. We took him to Area 29, and as soon as he walked in, we said, we want the biggest booty stripper for my guy. <laughs> and then I gave him. I gave him like a couple hundred dollars in ones. He goes, what do I do? <laughs> he was taking $1 and putting on her butt. And I was like, dog, you got to slap that shit. <laughs> they was like, they were like making it rain. He was like literally just dribbling the ones. He looked so overwhelmed. And at one point we had three girls on him. He had like ass on the face, ass on his lap. And then it looked like they were like playing pinball with his face. I was like, I wish I, 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 I don't want to whip my phone out of a strip club, but I wish I would have got a video of that. But the problem was my videographer was the guy getting the ass. So God, it was so much fun, but it's so funny. Like it, it got to about four in the morning and I was still there and <laughs> everyone was kind of winding down. And I was fading fast. And that's when I knew I'm getting old. I, I don't want to do this anymore, staying out this late. I'll, those 4 a.m. nights, uh, especially if you're over 40, they hit different. They hit different. I can do that about once or twice a year. And I got it in last week. Not doing it this week. But I just remember the whole I went there with like 10 people. And it ended up being me and two other people. And... It was my buddy, my buddy Irwin and his friend, and they started talking about world problems. And it seems to happen like that. When you get liquor, maybe a little bit of drugs, I'm not talking about the hard stuff, but some weed, some edibles involved. And all of a sudden, when you start coming down a little bit, you start talking about the most random shit. And I was like, are you guys at a strip club talking about politics? <laughs> or what are the interest rates on homes? I was like, yeah, I'm ready to go. And I saw a meme one time, like, if you don't say goodbye, you save, like, so much time in your life when your life's over. You literally save, like, six months of your life are wasted on goodbyes when you leave a room. So, literally, I, they were talking, and the other crew had left. So, we came in, like, there was three different groups. I came solo, and then I had my my guy Brad was in town. The mailman was in town. And then my videographer, Dan, was in town. Then Erwin and his friend was there. And then she had some friends. So it was like a group of three different group of people got our own section. And I just was like, I can't I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and so after the first group left, and it was just me, Erwin, and his friend, they were talking. And I just got up and slowly walked out. And then I was on the highway, and Erwin finally called me. He was like, yo, you leave? I was like, bro, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I'm out. So, yeah, shouts out to Area 29, though. The donkeys in that. So, Erwin, I mean, uh, my, my videographer had a ball. So, to pop his strip club cherry, this was the right city to do it in. So, and the wings, oh, the wings were fire there. Strip club has some of the best food. And I, the most random thing happened. So one of the one of the dancers we got for my videographer, she was like, "You like banana pudding?" At a left field, you like banana pudding? I was like, "Yeah." She was, "I make banana pudding. We sell it here at the club." She goes, "If I give you one, can I get a picture?" I said, "I don't care." She went and got me a banana pudding. That was fire, and I ate it so fast. She goes, "I didn't get a picture." I said, "Oops, got another one." So, <laughs> so there, there is a dancer there. Hey, if you go to Area Twenty Nine, you want a good dessert. Yeah, get, get, ask for the banana pudding. It's only $10 a pop. And I asked her, I was, so it's funny, like, you go there and then you start having conversations with the dancers. The one girl, uh, when she gave me the pudding, I said, so you make this all the time for the club? She goes, yeah, I make about 100 for the weekend, and, and I uh, I sell them for $10 a pop. And I was like, wow, that's $1,000 extra off something you like doing. So shouts out to her. Talk about an entrepreneur. Ass and pudding. I don't think there's a better combo out there. Now, I did, I did, I'll tell you this, a funny story about banana pudding. Talk about going to Addison. I go to Addison Improv the last week of May. About 15 years ago, there's a restaurant next to the Addison Improv called Shuck and Jive. And it's like a Cajun, uh, Cajun spot. They got good food there, but they got banana pudding. They got great banana pudding there. I go in there one night after my show, and I'm eating, and... This guy comes up and he's like, yo, man, Gary Owen, he's talking to me and stuff. I'm a big fan of your work. I appreciate it, man. He goes, yo, can I 
can I get? I was already eating, so now he wanted to buy my. I guess he wanted to buy my dessert. He goes, yo. He goes, yo. Uh, you want anything else to eat? I'll get it. You, you want to get? I'll take care of your pudding. I think I already had the pudding. That's what it was. I was done eating, and I was eating the banana pudding. He goes, yo, Gary, I got it. I, I, I'll I'll pay for your pudding. And I said, bro, I appreciate the offer, but I cannot have another man buy me banana pudding. There's some things. Another man is not allowed to buy a man, and banana pudding's one of them. So, whoever that guy was, I appreciate the offer. You, you can buy a man a steak. You can buy a man a, 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 a lot of stuff, but you can't buy a man pudding, and especially banana pudding. So I said, brother, I appreciate it, but some things I have to do on my own as a grown man, and that is buy my own banana pudding. So. We had a great weekend in Houston. This week's going to be even better. So, yeah. The mailman came in town. Uh, we filmed. Oh, man. We got. It's it's crazy to be there at the start of someone's stand-up career and to watch them grow, like, right in front of you. Like, I always say I don't watch a lot of stand-up, but I, I really watch a lot of mailman stuff because I'm, I'm, I'm watching him develop his act. And it's almost like a proud uncle type deal with him. And I will say the guy is so quick on his feet because we filmed, I, I watched this stand up, we filmed all the sets and then he came to my house and we were filming, um, we got this new, we hope it takes off, but we got this new sketch series called uh, Babysitting. We're, we still got to come up with a title and maybe you guys could help me. So basically we're going to be babysitting babies. So it's going to be like OG Stank and G.O., or the mailman meets the real OG. I don't know. We got to come up with a title for this babysitting series we're going to start on TikTok and Instagram. And it's just going to be one minute. And he shows up at the house. And I got twins. And I'm holding them. And then we just start watching them. Watching the babies. And uh, we did some funny funny stuff with the babies. But we just got to come up with a title. So maybe you guys could help me with that uh, before we start posting it. We'll start the first episode probably in like two or three weeks. We just want to get like four or five in the can and just do like one a week and just a funny series that I think would be funny with me and him watching the kids together. Uh, but we filmed all that stuff and then then watching his act, man, this he's so quick off the top of his head. So we had seven shows this week in Houston. Five, he did great. There was two shows. One, he ate his first brick, the late show Friday, which is going to happen in this business. The crowd just went flat on him. I think it was a crowd that wasn't as familiar with him. And so they were kind of looking like, who is it? And if you don't know who he is and you don't know a lot of his, hey, stank a booty, and you don't know, you're really like trying to take it in. And he's building his jokes right now. So if you don't, if you know him, you kind of laugh at who he is, and then you laugh. You know that's what he's about, some of the stuff he's talking about. But if you don't know him, you're kind of like, what's he talking about? So, Ada Brick, Late Show Friday. And then the Late Show Sunday, uh, he, the crowd was kind of flat. They were flat for everybody, though. They were flat for my my normal opener, Rob. They were a little flat for me, and they were, they were flat for Mailman. They were just a flat crowd. It happens. But at the end of the night, everybody left happy, and we did a meet and greet, and everybody was like, yo, great show. But it was so funny. He said the funniest thing. I, I, I love comedians that don't go with stock jokes, don't do the easy laughs. Like they're really trying to give the, the audience a piece of them. So when they that Sunday crowd went flat, was a little flat on them, he was like, damn, I got to go out there and tickle you motherfuckers to get you to laugh. <laughs> I was like, just the fact that he addressed it and it was such a clever one-liner. I was like, oh my God. I go, he just got it. He's got it. But he made he made a post, right? He made a post on um Instagram. And we'll, you know, we'll show it. we we'll show it on this episode. In fact, we'll show it right now. I don't know which one of y'all need to hear this, but Gary Owen is not trying to get no clout off of me, damn it. <laughs> if anything, he helping me. This guy, he's he ain't had to work with me. I ain't never dreamed of doing stand-up. None of this, it just fell in my lap. He said, like, look, bro, you got something, you got it. You got something in you, brother. Like, let's let's figure it out. Let me help you. 
So I said, all right, cool. Let's roll with it. He's like, come on the road with me. This dude took me out of T-ball and put me in the major leagues. Y'all got to understand that. Like, I know y'all hearing doing the wire and, man, it's funny. It ain't no different than anybody else doing it. What, it's a problem because he Gary on? Like, we got the, y'all just on the outside looking in. Y'all don't understand what he's doing for me and my career and my future. Like, bro ain't have to work with me. He put me up in the big leagues. I'm going to skip, like, 10 years of comedy just to get right here. Like, this crazy, y'all. And it ain't no different than doing them unboxings, shouting out somebody's little business. Only difference is it's Gary Owen. Like, I'm getting something off of this, though. Yeah, I get the joy of helping people out by shouting their little business out. But that's all I want to do with all this. Y'all just help people out. And Gary's helping me out like crazy. Y'all don't understand. So, cut him a break, little stank. This is crazy. I love y'all. So you see when he, what he was talking about right there, he, he's looking at the negative comments on social media. And I'm trying to, I don't want to be the guy telling him what to do because he's doing great by himself. I just can give him advice and if he wants to take it, great. If not, he doesn't have to. But I try to stress to him that don't focus on the negative comments because that's human nature. Um, focus on those positive comments because those are people that are going to pay to see you. Those are people going to watch your videos on the regular. But I guess he got sick of people saying that I was stealing his RAR because he's got that funny RAR. And I remember when I first saw him on social media and we started DMing each other back and forth, I was like, dude, he was starting to stop using the RAR in his videos. I said, dude, where's the RAR? I was like, I said, that's what I look forward to every video. And then so now he, he does it 90% of the time. But when we do videos together, I'll do the RAR with him. And, of course, you got, quote, unquote, haters. And they're like, Gary's trying to get clout off the mailman. Gary's stealing his RAR. I go, let's slow it down for those uh, in the back of the bus, for those that are a little slow. Listen, I only use the RAR when I'm with him. I'm only doing it because I'm, I'm a, an extension of his character when we do videos together. And... And then as far as me getting clout off him, it's, it's almost laughable because it's like, no, it's just two people getting along, trying to make funny videos together. At the end of the day, that's all it is. Whether we get one view or we get 10 million views, if you like work with somebody and you can do funny videos together, why not do it? So I just tried to, but he, he had had enough. He's like, nah. I, I, I need to say something about this because it's bothering me. And then he was so funny. He goes, it's usually white people. <laughs> he said that to me because the black people know who I am. The, these these few white people that aren't familiar with me, they just think I'm, I don't know if they think my career is falling off and I need help. But I'm like, no, that's not what's happening here. I saw a guy that I just see, when I see talent, I swear to God, if I want to stand up, I could be a talent scout. When I first met Ali Wong and she opened for me at the San Francisco punchline, I was like, yo, she got it. There's something there. When I saw Sebastian Manikowski the first time, I don't even know if I pronounce his name right. I, I always struggle with his name. Luke Keekley, I always called him Luke Keekley and Sebastian, I struggle. When I saw him, I was like, oh, my God, there's something there. Uh, Ken Jung, I always thought Ken Jung. I was like, ah, there's something there, like. There's so many. We always knew there was something there with Cat Williams. We always knew that. Um, there's a few I didn't see coming. I didn't see Kev blown up like he did. I never saw Tiffany blown up like she did. Uh, I always knew they were funny and good, but I didn't know they were going to go to that height. But you never do. But I'm just talking about the people that I, when I saw it, I was like, I saw it. And I see it with him. I see it with Mailman. And I'm I'm always trying to stress to him, have, have the discussions with your family about you're going to have to be gone a lot more than they used to, but but you being gone means you're making money and you guys can change your whole life. You can change generations of lives after this because when you – our backgrounds are really similar. Broke white dudes from Cincinnati. So our family's mentality is similar. Um, how we were brought up is similar. I mean, he the, some of the stories he shared with me, and I don't want to share on here, uh, of – the stuff he's been through in his life and he's seen, I'm like, yo, just write it down. Not yet, but when it's time, 
start talking about that stuff on stage because there, there's some there's some doozies in there. So, yeah, I just I got the guys just got it, man. I feel like I'm kind of I feel like I'm kind of like um, uh, I don't want to say it all, but it's like I don't know. I just know when somebody's got it. And it's not going to be surprising when he gets an offer for a movie, TV show, or something. It's not going to surprise me at all. And I just want to be prepared. So I try to give him, like, definitely in and out, in and out. That sounded bad for what I'm about to say with the Diddy shit going on. I don't want to say in and out. I just I want to give him, like, good advice on what to look for in this business. Because there's going to be the, the, the snakes are out there. And I don't want to scare them. Because there's a lot of great people in our business, a lot of generous people, a lot of people that really just generally want to see you succeed and is happy for your success. But I just want him to be careful of there are snakes out there. There are people that will go behind your back. There are people that will undercut you. They'll give you terrible deals. All that's part of this business. So anything I can do to help, I'm like, I'm I'm good where I'm at in my life. I'm secure. I'm doing great. And if I can help him along the way and if we can keep making our own funny videos together and who knows what can come of it, I mean, just have just having fun. I like hanging out with the guy. Like, we we vibe when we're together in the room, like, like talking and stuff. So, yeah. Because it's like, it's funny, like, talking so much about about mailman and then people with the, with the negative stuff. Uh, it's funny, like, I was, I, I did a, a post last week about Jamel Hill and how uh, I didn't think she liked me because of this comment I made at the Portland, Oklahoma State, uh, Oklahoma City game when Dame Lillard hit that three pointer. <laughs> I told the whole story last week. So when I made the comments about Jamil, I made sure I didn't jump to conclusions. I made sure I didn't, uh, call her out of her name, uh, act like uh, she's a bad person. I was very like, I don't know what happened. I thought we were cool. And sure enough, because I showed respect to her and didn't like go nuts, I was like, she in turn made a beautifully worded comment on the post. I I'll read what she said. Um, and she called me and we talked this week. And she said, I don't know how it came across to you about why I didn't have you on my podcast and things like that. And where's my, I don't know why I have a hard time pulling stuff up on Instagram now on my laptop. I just put up on my phone. So she said, let me find, let me find it. Um, Jamel, Jamel, Jamel. Here it is. Yeah, so after I made the post about she didn't have me on her podcast because I, I made the joke on Twitter about Dame Lillard and his head coach not being able to say the N-word, she wrote to me. Uh, she said, hey, Gary, I appreciate you for saying this. I don't deny your account of the events. I was taken aback, and my mistake was not having a personal conversation with you. I never unfollowed you on social media or said anything publicly. I've got no problem with you speaking to your experience. The reason I canceled the podcast wasn't out of personal dislike, but I just didn't want what happened to overshadow what I felt like would be a great conversation. I apologize for not communicating with you sooner. Let's talk offline, but I promise you there's no beef, beef from this direction. So, uh, I just appreciate her and we she called me we exchanged numbers again we're back in touch and she explained to me her side of things and then I explained to her how it came to me and I was taken back because I thought we was cool I thought and honestly I thought that would have been a good discussion to have uh me and her uh, on the air and she said she probably and it was she said to my fault I probably read the comments too much looked too much into them and it was just wasn't that deep she goes but yeah when i'm on she goes i'm on hiatus night now but when it's back i'd love to have you on we could talk about more than just that but sports in general and so it was just cool and it was nice to like have a conversation with somebody and knowing that you can have a disagreement and but you don't have to go attacking them or saying how dare jamel hill or call out her name for not having me on her podcast she whack anyways because i'm like i don't think she's whack i was like i She's found her voice since she's left ESPN 
And uh, like I've always said, she's definitely not racist, definitely not uh, anti-white, but she gives things from her point of view. And then she's definitely pro-black. And uh, it's I just feel like it's okay. It's like it's, I don't know, it's just sports commentary. You ain't got to agree with everybody. But I'm glad she called and I'm glad we got to work that out. Now, I did see the everybody was talking about the, the female basketball tournament this past week. Uh, South Carolina might have had the greatest season in the history of women's college basketball, undefeated. Pretty much dominated the whole season. There was a few games that was close. But as I was watching the Iowa South Carolina game, I burst out to like a 10 0 lead. And even as you watched it, I was like, this ain't going to last. I was like, this team is so much bigger and athletic and just better. I was like, I was like, oh, yeah. And sure enough, it, South Carolina started to nip away and came back. And it was just like, and I don't, and it, 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 Caitlin Clark is about to be the number one pick in the NBA to Indiana. I just, people, when you watch her play, her shooting's ridiculous. But some of those passes, when she gets to the WNBA, that girls are going to be able to finish. Because some of them Iowa girls got some dimes and just could not finish. They are probably a little too slow getting the ball up. Or the, the other team was just bigger, so they couldn't get the ball up. When she gets to the WNBA and all that kind of evens out, and she starts getting like, ballers that can handle because she brings that ball up and she does little subtle things behind her back between her legs and needs just that much room to get a three pointer off when she gets to WNBA and she's got girls that are uh, probably the most athletic girls she's ever played with. I go, her game should elevate even that faster. I saw, I saw a video of Larry bird and he made it. He made a thing. Talk about trash talking. He made it a comment. He goes, "Yeah, he was about five. He was, I was about five games into my NBA career." And he goes, "Oh, I I can play here. I'm about to dominate this shit." <laughs> I was like, "I wonder if guys think that when you go to the league, I bet you it's either this. You're over here, over here. You're either oh shit, I I'm not the man anymore. I'm I'm looking. I'm lucky to get three points a game. And then you got those other ones like, oh, this is it." This ain't that different. Uh, with the fact that Larry said that, so I it's going to be interesting this summer when the WNBA season starts. Because I love how female basketball is. It ends, and then the draft is like a week later, and then the season's like another week later. It's literally like you win the title, and two weeks later in the NBA. It's like that fast. And so it'll be interesting to see how if Caitlin, because you're, you're going to know immediately. You're going to know within her first five or six games if she can play in this league. So, because at the same token, there's going to be girls that are that much more athletic that she's got to go against than in college. So, yeah. So, so congratulations, South Carolina. Complete domination all year. Uh, now, I, I will say Dawn Staley. I liked what she said about Caitlin Clark. As soon as she won the trophy, she goes, shouts out to Caitlin Clark. You've uplifted our game. You are now one of the GOATs. Because it's all about dollars. And Caitlin Clark is going to put asses in the seats. And people are going to watch. If she starts balling her first year, watch how fast those arenas sell out. And watch how the money goes up. So regardless how you feel about her, and I don't know how you cannot like her, and if she's going against your team, if you really are all about women's sports and want women to get more pay, you want Caitlin Clark to be super successful in the WNBA. Because if she's successful, then the TV deals go up, there's more eyeballs, there's more endorsements. So then everybody's money goes up. It's similar to Tiger Woods. It, that's what pissed me off the most when Tiger Woods got in trouble with when his wife found out he was cheating and all that stuff. And all those all the golfers didn't stand up for him and threw him under the bus. I was like, are you crazy? The one guy I saw stand up for him was John Daly. Of all people, the alcoholic, redneck, fat guy. He was like, he basically put it out there. He goes, if Tiger Woods plays, we all make more money. Tiger Woods in a tournament, Tiger Woods in a televised tournament, all of our money goes up. So how could you not want him to be successful and, and, and keep playing on the tournament? Because if he's in it, the money goes up. It's the same thing with Caitlin Clark. 
I know she's going to get drafted number one by the Indiana Fever, but you want her to be successful. If you really care about women's sports, you want Caitlin Clark the ball. Bottom line. So we're going to see what happens. Now, I will say I did disagree. I, God, Dawn said so dope, but I did d- disagree with her because literally she's so funny. This guy asked her a question about transgender athletes. Do you think they should be able to play women's sports? And her her answer was, yeah, I think if you consider yourself a woman, you should be able to play female sports, uh, regardless of how you're born. And then she said, well, I really appreciate you asking me this question right before the biggest game of my life because now people are going to comment on this and now i got to deal with this media backlash, regardless of my answer, whether she said she agreed or she disagreed. She was going to get some backlash. And she said she agreed with it. I disagree. I don't think if you a dude and you turn into a woman, you should not be able to play female sports. You still got man bones. You still got man hands. And you still got a man's feet. So you're pretty much a man other than breast and you cut your penis off. I don't think you should, I don't, I'm just saying, I don't want my daughter playing in college. And then I got some big dude backing her down the lane. I don't want a guy that used to be Rod and now he's Rhonda going off on her. So I disagree with Dawn on that. Just, just out of physicality alone. I don't want, and I'm sure I, I'll deal with a little backlash, but I, I, I pretty much stand by that. I don't want some dude back there down the lane. Because, I mean, even if you transition to a woman, you still got man strength. And so like, there's a reason that when you play golf, the woman's tee is a little closer. Uh, just the, the woman's basketball is a little smaller. I mean, there's a reason for that. Just physically, it's just we're just different beings. So I think they should have their own league uh, as far as it, the more people transition, it's just a matter of time. So maybe you could have a transgender league, but I don't know. I think more people agree with me than not. I think the people that don't agree with me on this topic, they'll make the most noise. But I think majority of people agree with how I feel. I don't know too many. There's certain things that deep down we all know how we feel about it. And we know a majority of people feel the same way. But sometimes we're just not allowed to talk about it because you're so scared of the backlash. So like like this topic, if you're a dude and you turn into a female, I don't think you should be able to play female sports. So I, so I think it's an unfair advantage, uh, especially when it comes to combat sports, fighting and stuff. Come on, stop. And then it's, it's similar like, like there's a double standard. If a male, I, I've seen, a, there's been a great influx of female teachers sleeping with their students lately, guys in high school. Now, if it's a, a male, if, it, if it's a, a, a male teacher sleeping with an underage girl, yeah, that's disgusting. You want to kill that some bitch, all that stuff as a dad, right? And this is how dads feel. I can't speak how moms feel. I'm telling you, how, I'm telling you how most men feel. Yo, that, I, I. I want to kill that dude right there. I want him in jail for life. Bye-bye. You're gone. Female teacher sleeps with a male student. This is what you never see. You never see a dad making an impact statement in court. You ain't seen one dad get up and try to go off on a female teacher for sleeping with his son. I've never seen it. You see the dad, they... They in the courtroom like this. Huh? Yo, I mean, just whatever the courts decide. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's, that's my son. I don't want it to happen, but I'm going to be like, I mean, did you get an A? <laughs> I was, oh, that makes sense. I was wondering how you failed art but got an A in calculus. You know what I mean? <laughs> you ain't mad at that teacher. You don't think that teacher's a predator? Come on now. <laughs> What's she look like? 
<laughs> That's the truth. Watch. You never see dads going nuts when the female teacher sleeps with the male student. Show me. Show me on the internet. Show me a dad that's just irate because his son blew his teacher's back out. I just ain't seen it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I just There was a... When my kids were in school, I'm not going to get the teacher's name or the high school or the school out. At one point during my kids' education, they were in a private school. And a teacher got caught. This, this, this dude did some bitch shit, though. There was a teacher at their school that was having an affair outside the school, had nothing to do with the school. Had an affair with a guy. Want, she wanted to break the affair off. This, this bitch of a dude. So when she said, I want to break up. This dude posted pictures of her naked pictures that she sent him privately to his phone and released them on the internet. And then a bunch of the blogs picked it up. And then I just remember when we saw it, a dad sent it to me. Another dad was like, yo, you see this? And I was like, oh, my God. It was, <laughs> it's one of my kid's teachers. And I was like, yo. But think about it. She didn't do anything sick or disgusting. Whatever, she clearly wasn't happy in her marriage and she had an affair. It happens. Trust me, I know. So, I think, but the guy, you did some bitch shit, bro. You literally ruined her life. She got fired. And I don't know what happened to him and his job. I think he got fired too. I read that. But in the end, she was a good teacher. She did care about her kids. That was just something she did in her personal life. She released that. But the fact that she was a teacher at a uh, private school that was also a religious school. Cause I just remember we was at this, we was at a it was a whole board meeting. Like should they they fire her or not? And I'm looking around at some of the dads and the dads like to Gary you can't say that. I was just like look this this is a Christian school. The Bible says forgive, right? I think we should forgive her. <laughs> and she was attractive. That was the funny part. It wasn't like some nasty old hag. Like she was a young I remember the first day we met at one of the PTA meetings, she was like, my passions in this order are Jesus, my family, and cheerleading. I was like, what? That, that's your three passions, the main ones? <laughs> Jesus, in order, my family, and cheerleading. <laughs> I was like, oh, so if you was going to ask me if you would have lined all my kids' teachers up, right, by that response, who you think had the affair that got busted, I'd be like, her. That would have been my first choice right there. And everybody looked at the new pictures, everybody. <laughs> I was like, well, she had a little body on her. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I just, I wonder what happened to her, but I just thought that was the biggest bitch shit a man could do. You both had the affair. She broke it off, and you're mad? What? And so you ruin not only her personal life, but her professional life. You messed her family up. And I know there's going to be women out there. She messed her family up. No, he messed it up. And then, and her professional life. Like, she worked really hard. You got to be a good teacher. In these private schools, they, you know, they're, they're, their hiring process is a lot stingier than public school. And to get in a school like that, and to be a good teacher and to build up all this equity because she had been there for some amount of years, all to have it go away because some, like, bitch dude released pictures on the internet? I thought that was just, uh, I didn't like that at all. So if anybody knows the school district, that's how I feel about that situation. I thought that was the biggest bitch shit I ever did. Hey, dudes, man. On the other hand, you could say that. That pussy was fire to make a man do that. <laughs> she must she must have some good shit. Let's be honest. Because <laughs> it wasn't that good. Dude would be like, all right, I'm happy we breaking up. That dude was hurt. That dude was like, nah, if I can't get it, nobody getting it. <laughs> Other than her husband, right? So anyways, uh, yeah, I was, I, I was, uh, it was funny going back to, Moving to Houston, uh, I was thinking about I, – I spent so much time in Houston when I was avoiding a process server. Uh, God, I, was, I, I just was reminiscing about those days. I don't know if anybody had to avoid a process server, but it's funny. Like I drive by the hotel where I was always staying 
all the time. And uh, and it was funny, like, I remember the time I went to the Bahamas one time because I, I just had to get out of the country. Because when you're, when you're avoiding a process server, you're looking over your shoulder every which way. So I went out of the country twice. I went to the Bahamas and I went to Italy. And no other reason just to get away. And you finally could, like, feel like you could breathe. You have nobody looking over your shoulder. And because, man, because I remember when I got to the Bahamas, uh, I did bring a girl with me. And uh, I was thinking, and keep my separated. So uh, I just remember everyone that saw me, they asked for a picture. I said, you might not post in this for a while. And then all the workers there was like looking out. Every dude that came up to me that knew I was going through the divorce because that was in the heat of when TMZ was on my ass and everything else. I just remember everybody I ran into at the Bahamas was like, I was like, Yo, man, I, I was just honest with people. Hey, man, I'm laying low. I'm laying low. And they was like, oh, I get it, G. I get it, G. I have more guys buy me drinks and just pass them down that week. Like, like almost like, yo, you look like you need it. That was the most stress-free five days uh, in the heat of my divorce I had was in the Bahamas. And shouts out to the Bahamar, that resort. That's the only resort I'll stay at when I go there because they always take care of me. And the way they looked out, that week, when I just had to get away because stuff was weighing on me. When you're getting blasted on the internet, you're like, oh, every day you don't know what's coming. And then your lawyer's calling you, filling your brain up with shit. I go, I'm out. I just had to get somewhere. And then can't get served in the Bahamas. So I was just like, oh. I remember it was five days that I could actually just get something to eat. I could have drinks. I could sit by the pool, the beach, and I wasn't worried about when somebody came up and said hello, that about to stick me with some papers. That's some stressful stuff, man. But shouts out to the Baja Bar in the Bahamas and every dude I met on that trip. Uh, man, we I, I was playing craps one night on that trip, and this one guy said, and I think he was lying. He said he works with Justin Bieber, but I don't think he did. And then he was like, yeah, he's like, I don't know if he said road manager, tour manager or something. I said, well, is he on tour right now? He goes, no, nah, but he's in the Bahamas. I was like, oh. And, other, you know, and I'm, I'm rolling craps with him. And then his girl started getting really friendly with the girl I was with. And I started looking around like, what's going on right here? And then they kind of disappeared. They went to the bathroom together. And then when they came back, I was like, then the dude started making like kind of odd comments to me. And I was like. And I told the girl I was with, I said, I think they trying to take us home. <laughs> I think they might be swingers or some shit. This ain't happening. <laughs> and then, but I think that's what I think dude might have might have I think he might have gave his job title a little little uh I think he was a little uh he gave himself a little more quote unquote clout than he is with Justin Bieber. And maybe I misheard him. Maybe he said Justin Deeber. Maybe I thought he said Bieber, but he said Deeber. And I had the wrong guy completely. But I just remember, like, it just got a little odd the more I was playing craps and the more drinks were flowing. And he started high five me a little much. And then he started putting his arm around me a little much. Then the girl started grabbing on the girl. I was a little much. I go, a lot, there's a lot going on right now. And then when he went to the bathroom for, like, 20 minutes, I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, I know this girl, but I don't know her that well. So I'm like, is it? What's going on right now? What are they doing in the bathroom? And he came back and she goes, no, no, we just, you know, girls, we just talking. And then uh, it just got, you got to be there. But the, I was like, I think the dude might have been trying to, to trying to pick us up. I really do. So <laughs> could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah, this podcast is all over the place. We went from strip club to trying to get picked up in the Bahamas. But all right. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, Houston, I'm here this week again. My new official adopted hometown. I always love Cincinnati. That's always going to be home at the end of the day. But I'm really enjoying living in the great city of Houston. And then next week, Greenville, South Carolina at the Comedy Zone. And then we'll, we end the month in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the Improv. And then May 3rd through the 5th, I'm in Colleen, Texas. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, sorry. May 2nd, just got announced. I'm on the Netflix is a Joke um, Festival. I'm going to be at the Miracle Theater in Inglewood, California. 
So Thursday, May 2nd, L.A., Inglewood, California, Miracle Theater. That just got added this week. So we just announced it like two days ago. So, yeah, come see me if you want to be on the West Coast, if you want to see me in L.A. Uh, one show's for sale. I hope we can sell it out and we can add a second one. So May 2nd, Miracle Theater, Inglewood, California. Netflix is a joke festival. All right, we'll pop the flyer, flyer up on here also. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all next week. This is Gary on the Get Some Podcast.